Hi, Dr. Bradshaw here with Wilmington Functional Medicine, and today we're going to be talking about how to properly do a doctor's data QMAP hormone test. It's a urine test. So you should have a bag, and in that bag should be a couple of cups and a box. You get your box, make sure that on the side of it, it says QMAP. Okay? More than likely it is, just in case you're given the wrong test or given the wrong video, make sure that these instructions that we're, you're watching match the box you were given. Okay, let's dig into this box. Put the bag aside, cups aside. You're going to open the box. There's going to be a few things in here. There's going to be an instruction manual. We'll go through that. There's going to be a requisition form. We'll go through that. Another form you'll need to fill out. We'll go through that. And a box, white box, styrofoam box, as well as a FedEx bag. Put the FedEx bag aside, put this big box aside. And open up your styrofoam box here. Make sure you also, inside that box, have a ice pack. Go ahead and take this first thing and put this in your freezer. Because you will be needing this later. Let's make sure that it's cold and ready when we're ready. And there's also a Ziploc bag with some pipettes and some test tubes. So make sure that all that's in there. And in, the, uh, in this bag should be five pipettes and five test tubes. So make sure, count through there. If not, call us, we'll get you a, a new kit that is complete. Make sure all of these parts are here first. Okay, let's leave that box alone for a moment. Let's go back to the requisition form. This you will need to fill out. It's highlighted, it's only single-sided. So on this single side, You'll see it says fill out or highlighted. There's a highlighted box here and a highlighted box here. Fill that out completely, okay? You'll need your, your height, your weight, and then there's gonna be some dates and times for the different samples of urine you're going to take. So you won't be able to fill this out all at the beginning, but just know that you're gonna be filling this out as we go along. This patient information box, you can go ahead and fill that out to start, okay? Let's put that aside. This next form is double-sided, and it's just a bunch of questionnaires regarding your symptoms and your condition. So you make sure you go through this entirely. It is important, it matters. So make sure you go through, collect, correct, uh, sorry, check the correct boxes for what applies to you, okay? You will also be sending this in with your, uh, with your test. And that being said, once that's filled out completely, you can go ahead and just put that back in the, uh, the big box here that everything came in, just put that right in there. You wanna make sure that that actually goes back in your test kit, okay? So we put that in there. Now, instructions. Open that up. There's a lot of things that need to be done correctly prior to administering this test. Okay, so I'm gonna run through these, but you can also read them, okay? Uh, <clears throat> if it's a man or woman, you can collect any day of the week. But if you're a woman who still has a menstrual cycle, you need to do this between day 19 and 23 of your cycle assuming that day one is the first day of your period, okay? Now, if you know that yours, and that's assuming that it's a 28-day cycle, let's say you have a 30-day cycle, does that mean you need to add two to that date range? So instead of it being day 19 to 23, it's day 19, plus 21 to 25, okay? If you have a 27-day cycle, you need to subtract one from that date range. So it would be day... 18 to 22. That's when you're going to do this test. So if you're not coming up upon that date range, it might be two weeks before you do this test, that's fine. But this it's important to make sure you do this within that date range so you get the right uh, time of your month to get the correct, accurate data. Okay? If your cycles are irregular, you're going to need to contact us to make sure that we uh, are aware and give you the best uh, timeline when to do it. Uh, Prior to doing this test, three days before, you have to stop all oral or sublingual hormones. If you're taking hormones, you're going to have to stop them three days before. Uh, prior to this as well, for three days prior, do not use hormones vaginally. Okay, so if you're using hormones vaginally, also for three days, stop. Uh, other hormones such as topical creams, gels, injectables, and patches can be used without any problem at all. All right, it's just the oral sublingual and vaginal hormones. Okay, anything you're putting on your skin, it's fine. Uh, do not skip doses of your oral birth control pills unless we tell you to. All right, so if we told you to, 
go ahead and make sure you do so. But if we have not told you to do that, go ahead and you can keep using it for this test. All right, some other things. If you're taking steroids of any kind, you need to stop. Okay, the glucocorticoids are gonna affect your hormone levels, so make sure you get off of those. Uh, and you need to stop that five days prior to doing this test. Uh, one day, so for a full day prior to starting this test, no alcohol, no caffeine, no tobacco or nicotine containing products, that's vaping included. And also, no strenuous exercise, because that can really jack up your cortisol levels, and that can affect the data. So alcohol, caffeine, nicotine, strenuous exercise, all out one day prior to doing this test. Uh, you can drink a normal amount of fluids between, or for the one out, well, one day leading up to this test, you can just drink normally. So don't drink abnormal amounts of water, thinking you need to flush out your system. Just drink your normal amount of what you would drink normally leading up to the test. Um, <clears throat> obviously, we'll, with this in mind, we want to make sure we produce enough urine to get a thorough sample because you're going to be doing this for 24 hours. So make sure that ideally you drink somewhere between 6 to 12 cups of water 24 hours leading up to this test. That's about kind of the, the range we're looking for. That'll give you enough urine. It should. Uh, also, some other tests. Um, if we are testing for neurotransmitters, and that might be true for you, it might not, but it's just best uh, either way is to avoid the following food. There's a list. Avocados, eggplant, tomatoes, bananas, melons, pineapple, grapefruit, plums, fruit juice, nuts, nut butters, wine, cheese, rice, and chocolate. It's right here. Just read the list, okay? I'll tell you, just avoid those things. And as well, on the day that you're collecting, both during the day and at night, uh, recommended to avoid all supplements and medications until all the other urine has been collected. So if you're taking probiotics or fish oils or any sort of supplement, or medication, if you can avoid it during this test, just while you're collecting the urine for that one day, get off of everything. That will help make sure your results are not skewed, okay, the data is accurate. But anyway, if you have any questions about that entire list, it's right here in your instruction manual, okay? So let's talk about actually how to run this thing. Take your box, open it up. We know that the ice pack's already in the freezer, so we don't have to do that. You're going to take out this bag, we already know that there are five test tubes and five pipettes. We're going to take those out. And you're going to see that the five tubes are different colors. This little wipe off uh, toilet here, you can use that at some point. We'll talk about that in a moment. But just make sure you go through, and each of these are different colors pink, blue, green, orange, and gray. You see that right there. Okay? And each of those correspond to the different times you're going to be running these tests. So the orange one will be first, that will be at dinner time. The blue one will be second, that's bedtime. The pink one will be in the middle of the night when you have to pee. The green one is right upon waking, and the uh, gray one is going to be right at the end of the, um, well, I'm sorry, the gray one's actually at night, so let me be clear about that, I apologize. So, we'll go through it again so you understand. So on each of these, there's actually a spot for you to write your name, the date, and the time that you did this collection, and then the, your date of birth. So make sure you go ahead and just take all these out with a little Sharpie and write your name on there, your date of birth, the date you're going to be doing this test, and the time. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so this first one will be one to two hours prior to eating. And it tells you right here on the instruction manual how to run through this. Orange, the blue, the gray, the pink, the green. Okay, so the orange, two hour brown, orange is brown, two hours, one to two hours prior to eating. Dinner. Boom. And here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take the cup, go to the bathroom, pee into this cup. Do not try to pee into this. These are tiny. It's gonna be very difficult to aim. Some of you might be able to. It's best just to pee in this. Take your pipette, like we used to do back in high school chemistry, in there. Suck it up, open up the lid, and put that into the test tube. Now, all of these test tubes have fill lines. So it's actually marked on here, right there. I'm not sure if you can see it, hopefully you can. Right here near the top, there's a little line that says fill with an arrow. 
you need to get as much urine up to the top of that, or otherwise you don't have enough for the uh, scientists over there at the lab to properly look at your sample. You need to get enough urine in there, okay? So you pipette it up to the top, screw it off, go to your bag, or excuse me, go to your, uh, your box. You're gonna put this just in your box, actually back into your baggie, excuse me. Let's take out this little toilet. You can use the toilet to clean off your fingers if you need to get some urine on it. That's what this is for, for the moment. Put this into the baggie, baggie into the box, box into the freezer. Okay, and we know your ice pack is already in the freezer separately for now. Next one, bedtime. This is gonna be one hour prior to going to sleep. You're gonna take the blue one. You do the exact same thing. Write your name, today's date, the time you're taking this sample, your date of birth, pee in the cup. You can reuse these. Obviously when you're done with your urine, rinse it out, throw it out, throw it out in the toilet, and then this will be a new sample, right? A fresh, clean sample. One hour prior to sleep. Pipette it into the tube, close it off, go to the freezer, take out your box, take out your bag, put it in there, boom, put it back in the box, back in the freezer, go with that one. We're gonna go to sleep. Rinse this off, go to sleep. Okay. This one, this is the gray one. You're only gonna do this one if you wake up in the middle of the night to pee. And you should, if you drink enough water, like we said, between six to 12 cups of water, 24 hours before starting this, you're gonna have enough urine. So you're gonna wake up in the middle of the night, so keep this near the, the toilet in the middle of the night, so you don't have to go stumbling through trying to find this. Right next to the toilet. Take your cup, same thing. Pee in here, I pet it out, into the tube, fill it up to the fill line, close it off, go to the kitchen, open up your box, take out the bag, put this in there, back into the box, sit on top, freezer, back to bed, rinse this out, go to bed. Next one, number four. Upon waking, if you, by the way, if you don't do that gray one, it's okay. You're just not going to do it. You're only going to have four tubes, four samples. So that one you'll just discard. You just throw that gray tube away. But hopefully you're able to get that. It just, just gives it a little more data points and it's a little more accurate. So hopefully you can do that. Next one. Upon waking, like within 10 minutes of waking, go to the bathroom. Take your pink one. Same thing. Name, date of birth, time, date. You're going to fill this up, pee in the cup. Pipette, tube, fill line, close it off, into the box, the bag, boom. Last one will be right, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, last one is two hours after we're waking. So that pink one was 10 minutes, within 10 minutes of waking up. This one will be, let's say you wake up at eight, this one then will be at 10, okay? Or somewhere to 10 to 10, 30. Somewhere in that two to three hour range after waking up, this will be your last one. So again, you take your clean cup, pee in there, pipette it into this last green tube up to the fill line. Make sure you fill out your information, the time that you actually did this sample. And for the last time, you're gonna take out your box bag, throw it in there, seal it up. It's the last time you're gonna do this. Seal it up, put it into your box, take your ice pack, Put it on top, close it up. Now you're ready to go. Take all these pipettes that you use and you can throw those away. Now, you wanna let this sit frozen. That last sample's not frozen yet. You just put it in there. Four to six hours it needs to stay frozen or in the freezer till it's frozen. And then you can ship it off, okay? Now this is important. You wanna make sure that you ship this off so this doesn't thaw out. You wanna ship this on Monday through Friday only, okay? So <clears throat> we're gonna take this box after four to six hours, we're gonna put it into this box. By the way, we also wanna make sure, remember go back to our requisition form, those dates and times that you filled out on your test tubes, those also need to match what you've written here. So if you've forgotten to do this, go back, look at your test tubes and make sure those times correspond your orange, and so on, correspond to dinner time, bedtime, waking up in the middle of the night, or sorry, waking in the middle of the night, waking in two hour past waking. Make sure you have your dates and times on there that match your test tubes.
that requisition form. You already filled that other form out earlier that's already in the box. This is in the box. This box into the box. Boom. Close it up. Okay. You've got your FedEx bag. A little label on the outside. First, put your sample. This bag is open on one end. Okay, just open that bag way up. Slide it in. I would recommend these boxes can be a little flimsy, this lid. So I put a piece of tape on it just to make sure it doesn't pop open in the middle of your uh, journey to the lab. Is it critical? No. But just make sure that it doesn't open up. That's what I would do. Put it in your bag. There we go. Little plastic adhesive. You peel that off. Close that up. It's just a sticky. Boom. Take your label. Go to the front. You can see there's a kind of a cordoned off area, box area. Peel off your label. It's just adhesive backing. Peel that off. Boom. Stick it right on there. It's going to Illinois. All right. So now you got to get to Illinois through FedEx. So we're going to ship this on a Monday through a Friday, okay? Because they will, uh, <clears throat> they will be working on Saturday. They can because it's going to be an overnight mail. The lab is open on Saturday, so you can send it Monday through Friday. Don't send it on a Saturday because they won't pick it up on Sunday and it won't get there until Monday. And then your samples will have started to thaw out. That's a problem, okay? So make sure that you get all that done. Um, make sure that you get that sent off. Um, and sent over uh, as quickly as possible so we can get your results back. That's important. The longer you wait, the longer it's going to be before we get your results back. Um, the other thing to keep in mind, uh, there's sometimes there are holidays in the middle of the week, like a Veterans Day or something like that. So you want to make sure you don't send it the day before a national holiday. You want to make sure that the next day is going to be either a Monday through a Saturday so it will show up on time and uh, your samples won't have thawed out. And there you go. Uh, if you're in Wilmington, this FedEx location is best uh, done at uh, FedEx Kinko's at College in Oleander. There's probably others sprinkled around outer Wilmington, but that's the one that works best because they do biological samples. Not every FedEx sends biological samples. Um, so make sure if you're in another area, city, state, outside of Wilmington, North Carolina, call ahead. There's a 800 number on the back of your instructions regarding FedEx. Find out where your nearest location is and if they actually accept biological materials. It's a question you're going to have to ask. I think you're set. You should get the results back once they get it within a week or two. So we look forward to going over these with you. Thank you for being such a great patient. And we look forward to helping you not only get your results back, but get you a game plan and getting better soon.